good morning sir good morning good morning sir very good, good morning so i am sorry that i am back to you to disturb for another 3 uh, hours it's a pleasure sir thank you uh, probably i just just for a minute so this uh, session is now roughly about uh, 70 to 75 minutes my concern is on just uh, briefing you all about a uh, uh, very interesting uh, notion which we have been practicing for the last uh, 20 years in my department and which we have later extended uh, to the entire campus of manasa gangotri uh, in the year 19 sorry 2011 and recently in 2017 to 18 uh, we just have extended the notion to uh, undergraduate level of uh, all affiliated colleges of university of manasa and now uh, which has become a mandatory component of uh, the new education policy called national uh, education policy so called choice based credit pattern for learning so my concern is on just uh, touch upon the philosophical aspects of this uh, choice based credit pattern of uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, paradigm in higher learning especially uh, i am discussing about the general aspects without getting into the much details on uh, implementation details of any specific uh, uh, higher education institutions like universities or uh, national institutions of records it is just to let you know uh, what are the different uh, responsibilities of both you know different uh, stakeholders like uh, students uh, parents and more so important uh, the teaching fraternity and where we are supposed to be accountable especially in this uh, new paradigm of uh, higher learning so that's the uh, motive of this you know so perhaps i just love to uh, get you a clear definition of what is choice why is choice should be there for uh, the students who uh, opt for higher education and uh, what did we really miss during our education right so, so should we accept this or not and why should we accept it in case if this appears to be something new then perhaps uh, don't we think that we really missed when we were the students of uh, graduation and so on these are the different you uh, know questions perhaps i would be addressing all about uh, while walking through this uh, general uh, philosophical aspects of this uh, cbacs pattern of education so as a preamble <coughs> uh university grant commission the ugc uh, uh, one upon a time way back uh, wanted to establish world class standards uh, higher education systems that doesn't mean that you know the india did not have such a world class standard uh, higher education institutions uh, earlier to this right the problem nowadays is that you know because most of the indian students uh, want to pursue their higher education uh, in different institutions across country in across globe then transformation of knowledge in the form of uh, quantification not in the form of you know uh, quality wise but in the form of uh, quantization right uh, was really tough because there was nothing like a uniform way of educating graduates so if somebody completes one year of education in mysore university and wants to go away from mysore then inevitably used to drop the education and walk out so he could not get that one year of education transformed to another university where he goes and gets settled down by so suppose a boy moves out of from mysore and gets settled down in hyderabad uh, unfortunately that you know he was in mysore during his stay in mysore he was uh, you know successful in completing first year education of masters but unfortunately uh, due to some reason he cannot continue the education in mysore but he wants to move out of mysore and get settled down in hyderabad 
then inevitably he has to drop the education of Mysore University and get into uh, a master's of his interest in uh, University of Hyderabad. Because again, he has to undergo through first year, uh, second year, and so on. So can we think of a mechanism where we can work out some standards of you know, some levels of abstractions in education so that students can uh, move from a university to university, an institution to an institution? So uh, can we think of uh, some mechanism where students can make use of the credits that he has earned over here? He is knowledgeable, there is no second thought, but uh, just because he cannot continue another one year, un unfortunately, he will drop the course of my university and he has to start from the beginning you know, of the same, same program in another university, unfortunately. So then university uh, grants commission thought of, why can't we think of uh, some standards, uh, different levels of uh, education so that students mobility can be increased. So the same thing is true, you know, when somebody uh, gets married, be, especially uh, this is a problem with girl students. You know. I had seen, especially in MCA graduate that, you know, when they are in third semester, they get married. So they, get, they married to somebody who is uh, settled down in United States of America or in Canada. Then uh, unfortunately, that girl has to just forget the masters of uh, computer application and then walk out of university and goes and gets settled down in USA. Again, applies for MS there. But he, she takes up some course, let's say discrete mathematics in the USA, but she has she had undergone through the discrete mathematics here in the University of Mysore and she was so successful. Uh, to get a better grade there, but in spite of it, she has to necessarily pay the fee over there and then uh, re enroll for the course and appear for the examination, etc. etc. So, can we think of uh, transforming this? If the University of Mysore is in a position to give her some credits, right? The moment she has become successful in you know clearing out all requirements of a particular course like discrete mathematics. If university says that you just have got so many credits because of the title of the course, and if she can hand over that credits to the university in the United States of America, perhaps she can save some money, not only that more so important, she can save some time so that she becomes uh, graduated soon, right? So this is, this, is, this is what the University Grant Commission thought of, wanted to bring in some world-class standards in higher education by introducing different levels of abstraction at education. So obviously, it is. It was to reforms uh, structures in uh, learnings in general, and specifically in higher learning. Right. So wanted to have some reforms, and the University Grant Commission also had made it mandatory that if any higher education institution HEs HEIs have to apply for some projects being granted by MHRD, being granted by UGC, then. The universities must have inculcated, you know, what this is called the CBCS education plan. So it was in the year nine, 2009, you know, not 2008, if I, I remember. And then at that, that time, University of Mysore, under the leadership of then the Vice Chancellor, Professor Vijay Talwar, initiated all of a sudden. Yes, why can't we think of uh, ourselves being the frontier university in adopting? Uh, this you know uh, new paradigm of uh, learning. Yeah, we used to say that it was new, but unfortunately, you will you will come to know that it was not new as far as Indian standards of education is considered. So then, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University then wanted to make our university a model university, a role model for other rest of the universities, at least in, in Karnataka, and they wanted to establish an institution of excellence. You know. So of course, for that, we IOE center got established and different projects were sanctioned, big grant got sanctioned to the University of Mysore. So that's the different notion. So UGC because made it mandatory that all higher education, especially Indian universities, should think of this inculcation. Otherwise, no grants will be given, right? So there is a column in any, any application related to a project, you know, there is a column, whether your university is a CBC aspect, Based on how quickly you announce the result, that's another column. So especially in NAC, you know, in NAC there is some criteria and there is there are you know there is some marks for that. You know, if higher education has adopted, uh, the institution has adopted CBCS, then there is some good mark, otherwise no mark, something like that, right? So anyway, institution of excellence wanted to that University of Mysore wanted to establish. And then the goal is to accomplish. The goal is 
to accomplish excellence both in academy and research by uh, reforming some the standards and as well the structures of uh, higher learning and university of mysore moved out of you know, i thought of uh, uh, bringing in such culture of uh, credit based choice based education for students and when professor talwar wanted to have it then he called upon the chairman of then the department of studies of computer science especially my department uh, the professor nagbushan who was a man behind the success of cbcs education today in university of mysore uh, because we the department of computer science uh, started the cbcs education in 2000 itself when we launched new programs especially mtech in computer science and technology and mtech in computer cognition technology a very specialized program for that our department got about 5 crores grant so we initiated the, the two programs of masters uh, post engineering b you know programs with the cbcs pattern of education we adopted completely the structures being followed up by iits indian institute of technology triple iits you know and you know nits and also uh, iisc bangalore uh, national institutions uh, for technology we just have adopted the same structure where a uh, teacher used to have great autonomy the teacher used to have great freedom to not only to deliver and evaluate but also to chat out you know also to plan the content of the course that he wants to offer every every teacher in my department today is so you know can exercise the right of being you know freedom to uh, plan this is what i want to offer this is the content i want to offer this semester you can change i can change in every semester without even bringing it to the notice of board of studies and later we can get it accepted by board of studies that's the freedom uh, with which we are i'll come to that you know what freedom i am in but the freedom is at the cost of you know a, a, a responsibility it's not that I, i got to enjoy the freedom in the end of way i got to enjoy the freedom in a systematic way with a great responsibility so when you give some you know freedom to anybody it's not that you know he is totally free he is held responsible accountability is really a very important issue so that's what uh, the university then called upon professor nagbushan and nagbushan and myself were responsible in implementing this in our department then nagbushan uh, also uh, uh, requested me to be associated with him and then we worked together and then uh, we come out with the uh, regulations for the whole campus and which was implemented in 2010 so anyway uh, uh, we could not implement uh, actually the full fledged of the cbcs uh, pattern of education even in university of mysore so today also even today we don't have a full fledged cbcs but in our department we have a complete full fledged cbcs education what is that complete uh, full fledged cbcs education that's what my concern now okay so what you say that you know you all adopted cbcs education that's not the complete cbcs uh, pattern of education so uh the 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 very interesting thing which i really loved upon right i really liked very much is uh, the cbcs uh, system of uh, education uh, encourages uh, the theory and practical to be integrated all along i mean what does it say is that you know it uh, doesn't say that you you just teach theory separately and practical separately so you have to integrate even if you are teaching if you are offering course on economics the course on economics still has something to be practiced by a student right it's not that you have to simply give them some knowledge give them some information but the knowledge has got to be converted to be an experience you know the students in case want to experience then you have to get it to some practice what they learn in classroom you have got to practice outside right outside means could be in laboratory could be in a field right could be in their uh, restricted environment or could be in a real world but they have to practice so if theory is learned without the use of uh, practicing it is of no use right anything which we learn even in history you know even we learn something in history but that should be practiced otherwise why should i learn that's more important so Uh, acquiring knowledge is at one end is required that's in theory lecture hours but after acquiring knowledge what do you expect the student to do practically right? if that could be integrated all along with the core then students will not only become knowledgeable but also become experienced this is the notion which uh, cbcs pattern of education uh, really uh, you know canvas really insisted upon integrating theory with practice that's number one number two the choice in education 
choice in education means you know you just recollect uh, the graduation that the program that you had undergone so probably you were insisted to uh, acquire you know you insisted to enroll for all subjects i mean the courses which we call it as okay uh, bsc is called a program within bsc what you study a uh, subjects you used to say you know those subjects are called nowadays uh, courses so uh, whether you liked the course or not but you were forced to take it up and appear for the exam whether right so we, you, you must not have liked a specific subject but you were forced to do that whether you wanted to go in that whether you wanted to build up your future in that or not nobody used to bother but you were forced to do that if i explain my situation when i stepped out of 10 plus 2 education and wanted to join specifically urajas college of uh, you know constituent college of university of mysore for bsc education i was i was so passionate towards you know mathematics that i wanted to opt to mathematics in my bsc and because physics used to have great mathematics then i also loved to take up uh, physics but uh, i was not so particular interested in uh, chemistry so when i wanted to join you know bsc education then in in urajas college Uh, there was a pm and in addition to the physics and mathematics i was supposed to take one more what is that could be a statistics could be chemistry but i was not interested in any one of them but i was very particular about mathematics and then second interest goes towards physics but if i i was very very keen of taking up one of the languages either kannada or english all languages look there was a very 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 you know good good department uh, popular department there were popular you know poets in kannada uh, department of urajas college uh, poets in english in urajas college so th- there there used to be two uh, explicit uh, uh, very good departments named kannada language department and english language department but no bsc graduates in urajas college was permitted to take up either english or kannada as one of the options unfortunately right i wanted to take up all along with this physics and mathematics english right or kannada language right i preferred english in fact because today i look at without great knowledge of english especially the writing skill that's what you heard of in my lecture in the last week you know when i was talking about documentation maintaining the standards in linguistic you know i mean the linguistic quality is expected to be very good when you drop paper for communication or thesis for you know submission and so on you have to maintain certain minimum standards in linguistic quality so i was uh, very today i cannot think of you know doing a great research and publishing it without the knowledge of english but i came from a rural background i had my education school education in kannada language but later on i really found it very difficult to pick up good writing english but had that university had that urajas college permitted me to enroll for major english all along with physics and mathematics perhaps i would have been a very luckiest man today right but i was forced to take up chemistry along with that look even without interest i just have joined chemistry because otherwise i used to miss this physics and mathematics and attended two months classes in chemistry and by the time the university of mysore launched a new program called computer science in bsc and i just have moved over from chemistry to computer science as another option i happen to be the student of the first batch of bsc education of computer science of university of mysore luckily right so that was i mean now what i wanted I, though there was there were a department like english in canada the students were blocked not to take it up and anybody wanted to take english or canada as one of the optionals in graduation was supposed to move on to move out of urajas college to take up arts education bachelor of arts not bachelor of science so that was really uh, not acceptable today the, anybody who joins urajas college can take up physics can take up english can take up mathematics can take up kannada why not right because there are explicitly a well you know popular departments in urajas college called kannada and english that is what is the choice look dear friends even while buying a slip you know i will buying a, a slipper when we go to some some shoes shoes mall you know shoe shop i will have a choice to choose uh, something of my interest but in education system which is for permanent you know if i go to a textile shop i have I have choice many choice if i like it i choose wherever i go for another textile shop i choose something right if there is a great choice even for a temporary you know objects why not there should be a choice for a permanent education that's what we are concerned about 
that's what ugc wanted so give them a flexibility and choose the courses of their interest choice based education that's what it is more a student centric rather than a teacher centric education earlier the education paradigm which we had undergone through was teacher centric whereas today we expect the student centric education system okay so that's uh, for freedom for students to choose courses but the teacher has a freedom today to draft the content of the course that you would offer you know if i offer a you know, course on mathematics then i can draft the content this is what i am i'm expertizing in it i because this is my area of research i can teach you better i can give a better knowledge in this if you are interested in enroll it you have a choice for it so this is the you know, freedom for the teacher and not only that you become like a drona personality Drona, a great teacher of Arjuna, a great teacher of Dharmaraya, a great teacher of Duryodhana, right? So he used to enjoy the freedom of declaring the results of his pupils. Drona used to declare Arjuna, and now you are successful. Bhima, you are now successful, right? So look at there was nothing like a compulsory that right? everyone has to pass through every course. You know, Arjuna became strong in you know one vidya, whereas Bhima became strong in another vidya. Duryodhana excelled in yet another, right? But Drona used to offer different courses for different students, and Drona used to enjoy the freedom of declaring the result. That is what is today expected. So we expect all teachers of higher education to be like great teacher of our group called Drona. Right? That's what. Uh, Uh, and freedom at the teachers and freedom at the students anyway so this choice based grid system uh, as i said is a student centric education i mean student is more concentrated so what he wants what she wants we are supposed to give them but within the restriction of what is available in my shop if i come to my institution where i don't have a department of botany the students cannot look for that but students can suppose if my institution is as 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 you know as got his own name for the for education in zoology but not for the botany suppose assume that there is an institution which is known for uh, educating students in zoology there are very great scientists researchers in the department of zoology and the neighboring institution is known for botany and if any student wants to learn zoology in my uh, institution and botany in the neighboring institution we should permit so let him enroll here for zoology let him enroll there for botany if not in the same semester can move from one institution to another uh, so in the subsequent semester can we think of such a flexibility this is all about this complete natural you know uh, national education uh, policy today we are talking so in fact that nep is not something new which we are talking about nep is supposed to be what is this evolved of the cbcs pattern of education and before i for, for, you know proceed further let me also make it very clear that this ties based credit system of learning is something like a big umbrella it is something like a generalized umbrella a generalized scheme where you can fit in any of your you know policy any of your specific uh, existing uh, paradigm of uh, education as an instance of the cbcs i mean what i used to undergo through the the policy we had regulation we had you know at 10 years back or 20 years back that could be a specific instance of the cbcs education i mean in cbcs education everything is covered up in general so you can you can evolve something as an instance of it as an example of it even our earlier education system could be an instance of this uh, cbc as part of education so it is a student centric education students have got great responsibility and have got great freedom to choose uh, uh, courses of their interest from uh, semester to semester so uh, they can decide upon what they want to excel where they want to perform better right and so on so it is continuity in learning is another interesting component of the cbcs i mean we used to say it is an internal assessment when are the days of telling that it's an iam marks no it nothing like an iam nothing like an internal right everything is explicitly known to the students everything is open to the student but the student learning has got to be monitored by a teacher in a continuous manner from the beginning of a semester till last day of the semester so the cbcs insists upon the monitoring of learning right if there is a continuity in learning obviously any can anybody can excel in their area obviously when the students we used to uh, practice well we used to study well only during the period of examination that you during annual scheme you know annual scheme so the 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 examination used to be in the month of april 
and the classes used to start from the month of june or july they we used to spend unnecessarily the time without you know reading without studying till march or till february then after february uh, when when the examination started you know coming closer to uh, then then we used to sit seriously study well and memorizing things a very temporary short memory so this cbc has insisted upon no you have to conduct a test you have to conduct a, you know evaluation in a very a v if possible so see that the student is being monitored so once the teacher understand that he is a slow paced learner then the student can put more effort on him a student you know teacher can uh, let him know that you are you know very slow in learning right and then this is where you have to pick up things so you monitor and advise monitor and advise and see that the students will learn continuously that is what is called continuity learning that's what we call it as continuous uh, assessment it is not ia it is not internal assessment it is continuous assessment so of course for the purpose of reporting the performance of a student in a discrete manner right at some certain interval of time we just have discretized so there is a component c1 there is a component c2 there is a component c3 there is a component four you can split it up and then for uh, totally during the period of semester you know the students has been evaluated for so much of value so much of you know uh, marks that is what is called ca so generally ca is expected to be in the cbcs education ca is expected to be at least uh, 50% of the overall performance but unfortunately even today including our own university we just go with only 30% weight is for continuous learning the reason is that you know so we don't want the students to scare of examination obviously the science based education is to keep the students away from being afraid of education look okay. at if you don't evaluate the students during semesters and everything is decided based on the semester and examination then the three hours matter a lot right when students appear for the examination that after a semester for three hours that three hours is health status is psychological status right look on the day of examination if something goes wrong in the morning while while he was driving you know while while the student is driving towards the edge you know uh, the college for appearing for examination in case he meets with an accident then he will lose the examination then he will be considered to be unsuccessful in that particular course number 1 number 2 even if he can appear for the examination he met with a small accident but he could manage to come and sit in the examination but psychologically he is depressed you know can you expect even if he is a very good strong student but unfortunately he will go with a low performer right so do you think that the three hours is so responsible for for educating student the, the students who have been educated for the last six months you know? don't you think that that uh, three hours decide this effort put in by the student for the last six months unfortunately why can't we think of uh, evaluating the student monitoring the student as if you are monitoring your own kid your own son and your daughter if you can monitor the performance of a student from the beginning till the end of the semester and if you can evaluate him and tell him that look for 50 marks already you have been evaluated right and out of 50 you got 45 then the remaining uh, semester and examination is only 50% then the students will be happy that i already scored 45 out of 50 oh i am more than a first class student i am a distinction student right then then he need not scare off examination if something goes wrong the wrong on the examination let him drop it but 45 is already scored out that could be taken as out of 100 then he become successful you know this is what is i mean we must give a more weightage to the continuity in learning i mean the ca component and less for semester and examination to be frank with you people in my department we give 60% weightage for continuous assessment and semester and examination only 40% so that's what the cbc is insist upon so hands on experience as i said already it is to integrate all along the practical component of a course with its theory component right so hands on experience is possible students can not the student not only learn the theory but also practice of course you you may say that sir even in earlier education paradigm we used to have a laboratory two different papers look at the physics you still have one physics theory or three physics theory and all three uh, theory components uh, you know part by part were extracted and put as three units in a practical separate paper then it may so happen that one students will have regularly 
you know irregular for theory but he comes for only practical one students will come for only practical classes he doesn't attend theory at all but because he, he fulfills the attendance of this practical component and he will be permitted to appear for the examination then he becomes successful in practical without even taking up a study and theory unfortunate or vice versa is also true right vice versa is also true that should not happen so attendance should be counted the one who attends the theory should also learn practical so each theory should have integrated for practical integrated field work integrated tutorials and so on that is what is called and so on experience this provides many many interesting you know uh, uh, benefits for students uh, it is to integrate also precision with recallability of a learner probably you must have heard of people are telling that quite difficult to face case set examination very 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 a local state level examination called you know uh, case set and they really say that very very difficult to face a ugc net mathematics physics these people say that computer science also say that you know uh, very tough to face ugc net examination in computer science i rarely see people who become successful in ugc net of computer science why the reason is that our students are not so you know good at writing answer in precise way but they are good at recollecting and writing look at there are two interesting measures which we have got to look at while evaluating the any performer any any system for that matter in general not only human individual if you want to check the success of any working model right any working model including working student so we have to look at one is precision one is recall the precision is the one it is the ability of a person or ability of a system to attend to what is really required right what is really required recall is the ability of recollecting what is really wanted right okay so see for example if i quote uh, the following uh, you know thing uh, let's assume that there is one student let's say a student named x and there is a question for 10 marks the 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 question is very simple that list out 10 examples for some topic let's say t so list out 10 examples are 10 points of on a topic t then a student one student lets out only seven examples of that and unfortunately has forgotten the remaining three he has listed out seven all seven are correct another student let's say y he listed out 12 he listed out 12 but out of 12 seven are correct please understand here so when we evaluate in a current paradigm in a current paradigm of education when we evaluate both the scripts i end up giving 7 for the x and 7 for y also because both of them have written 7 correctly right both of them have written 7 correctly i had given 7 out you know 7 out of 10 for this guy and 7 out of 10 for this guy also but strictly speaking the x is more precise than y why attempted five more times but unfortunately went wrong right i mean why did not even know that you know those five were not the answer for this question whereas x knew it otherwise he would also have written it right look at if somebody ask you a question what is this object suppose if i ask you a question what is this object if you say it is a remote sir uh, that you, you are using for controlling your slide movement then i appreciate instead of that if you say that it is something like uh, you know a torch or something like a mobile then i understand that you are not aware of two things one is this another one is what you mentioned like mobile okay suppose if somebody ask you a question you know who delivered a lecture having seen my photography and so on if you say that it is uh, dr anjun swami then you are not aware of two personality number one myself guru number two dr anjun swami also if you are aware of dr anjun swami you should not have used this name right okay i mean when you go fail it indicate that it's not that you are not aware of one thing you are not aware of two things right that is what is called the precision versus recall but in our current education system we bother more about recallability how good he is in recollecting what i wanted but we are not bothering about how precise he is in recollecting right so look at the cbcs pattern of education perhaps helps the teacher to Uh, improve the precision ability of a, a student because you are interacting with the student in a continuous manner you would be guiding the students in a continuous days in a base from morning to evening every day from the beginning till end of the semester so yes obviously 
uh, it helps in integrating the precision and recall abilities of the learner together right so that the student becomes not only capable of writing the answers but also precisely writing the answer that's so it is also uh, towards open system of education still we have not accomplished even in university of mysore but we exercise this open system of education in our department why what is that let me tell you now see students would appear for the examination it is for let's say uh, 70 marks to uh, semester end examination then there is a central evaluation now all teachers from different institutions will come and sit together and evaluate the script and one day results will be announced one student who expected you know 65 out of 70 got 45 then what does he do obviously he files a complaint he comes for evaluation the, the again answer script will be given for evaluation but evaluation say that 46 or 48 or 50 no because he expected 60 he was he was he was looking for 65 so now again after evaluation he becomes unhappy once he is unhappy he will apply for what xerox copy of it xerox copy of it he has to pay 5000 rupees for it he has to pay 2000 rupees for it and initially look at for his only for, for his own answer script you know the student is supposed to pay student is supposed to pay so he takes the xerox copy and goes to another teacher gets it evaluated again he files a complaint then somebody will look at it and so on why why is that required why can't you think of soon after the evaluation is done soon after the evaluation is done you scan the answer script and put on the web let them look at it what are we losing why is that confidential right he has answered all it is his pen it is his answer script because he has paid for the answer script also as a part of examination fee the the, the script and the book is himself booklet is you know paid by him and the answer was written by him it was his you know ink only it was his pen only it was his effort only and i just evaluated the answer script and what is their confidentiality in maintaining why can't i think of the soon after the evaluation is done i scan all the script and then Put on the web so that whoever wants to see it can look at it. Not only that, X can see the answer script of X. X can also see the answer script of Y. If there are two students who got the same score, both of them, both of them, please mute your audio. Hello, mute your audio, please. Hello. Pushpa, somebody. Pushpa. Hello. Okay. Pushpa, oh, ma'am, unmute, buddy. So, see that you know why can't you think of uh, displaying everything? Or whenever student wants to look at somebody's answer script, you can just see that. What is their confidentiality? This is what this CBCS pattern of education or this NEP is canvassing all about. So you just give them back. In my department, what do I do? Of course, because this number of students is very limited to sixty. Right? Even in center evaluation, I doubt if any any teacher gets beyond hundred papers to evaluate. Right? So you can do it at school level, at at institution level, or you can exchange answers, script evaluate, and then bring them back and hand over back to the student, but maintain some accountability on it. i maintain a register so i conduct the examination from 10 to 12 let's say because only 40 marks you know i conduct the examination for 2 hours so it starts at 12 o'clock and it go you know winds up at 12 o'clock and then you know 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock then in the afternoon the same day if i am in station i just evaluate all the answer scripts otherwise next day i sit and evaluate once evaluation is done and semester examinations are all over in between we don't call the students because otherwise uh, they become unhappy looking at the less score in, in in case you know less score so that may affect affect on their psychology to appear for the next examination we expect all the students to come and meet us after the last day of examination they come after the last day of examination meet with me and then they put the signature in the attendance book against their name stating that i collected my answer script back evaluated answer script back i give them about 10 days time they can carry the answer script original answer script 10 days time they can go to any other university any other teacher who offer the same course you know any neighboring engineering college and meet with the faculty or if they find any discrepancy in evaluation they can come back for discussion 
they are supposed they are expected to report back within 10 days if there is any mistake in my evaluation because i am also human being you know i may commit mistake while evaluating sometimes while turning over the paper no while turning over the pages it may so happen that two pages come together which i did not notice and I, I missed the evaluating two pages where wonderful answers were written by the student, unfortunately. He wrote wonderful answer only in those two pages. But they got missed. They were not evaluated. Then finally, what do I do? And then I just sum up the amounts and put that as a 10 out of 40. But inside those two pages, he must have written for another 30. He was supposed to score 40 out of 40. If answer script is given back to the student, student can leisurely look at it. And, he, and understanding that these two pages have not been evaluated by my teacher, then he can approach me, right? He can approach me and letting me know that, sir, you are not evaluated. This is unfortunately missed. Then I can correct it. See, this is what is the benefit of open system of education. Why is there confidentiality maintaining confidential in, in mass, in evaluation? I don't know. You don't, you need not say that who has evaluated. If you want to hide the name of a teacher, fine. But at least you can share the answer scripts of your evaluation so that students can look at their answer script mutually. X can see the answer script of Y and Y can see the answer script. Then nobody can say that teacher is biased. I hand over all the answer script to all 60 students of my semester and they can look at mutually after 10 days. Right? They have got 10 days, they can report back. If they don't report, then I understand that they're happy with my evaluation. They need not hand over back the answer script. They can keep it. And most of the times I make fun out of it. You know, please keep your answer script so that you can show your answer script to your son and your daughter in the next generation. That's what. We don't collect it back. I don't want to uh, reposit and maintain it for a long, long years. But I have an accountability that the student got that back. He has collected and put the signature. Fine. So that is, if that is the case, then student need not fear, you know, have fear on examination. So it will definitely uh, reduce the fear of examination. That's uh, another advantage of this. And uh, all in all, all in all, obviously, the relationship between Guru and Shisha would definitely improve. Would definitely improve. Look at it. Suppose if you simply close your eyes and recollect uh, your great teacher. You are a great teacher, the one you really love, the one you want to recollect, the one you really want to really appreciate. Probably either would recollect our teachers at school education, primary school. Why? Because primary school education was completely open system of education. Completely open system of education. And there used to be continuity in learning. And there used to be hands-on experience. And the, the, the education is supposed to be student-centric. Right? The teacher used to be very close with us and they used to play with us. They used to guide with us. They used to guide every day, every moment, every every time. And the moment they evaluated, that's it, they used to hand over back and they used to request us to, you know, during holidays, you know, during the midterm holiday, uh, they were expecting us to answer all the questions of the midterm question paper and hand over that answer script back. And then he used to give the original answer script and we used to compare them. Where did we go wrong? See, even today, I recollect my great teachers of school education. That is, those are the teachers whom I love. And next is my PhD, right? The supervisor. Because even in PhD supervision, there was an open system of education. Right? This is how, I mean, look at the, 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 the affinity between student and teacher. If I draw the graph, by keeping, you know, excess is reserved for education, like uh, our, our age of a student or a education, like, you know, first standard, second standard, etc., graduation, and then PhD, the affinity is high in the beginning. Affinity gradually comes, right? During a, uh, affinity between teacher and student at primary education is higher than the affinity between teacher and student at you know, secondary education, like high school. Again, it comes down when we moved into 10 plus 2, and it becomes almost zero during graduation. And then master degree improves and then PhD it goes up. It becomes a bathtub, you know. That's the affinity. If that bathtub is expected to be straight line always, then this is the only modality to improve the guru shishya relationship. That's what uh, ultimate task. So the teacher should feel that I am a continuous learner like a student. Student should also think that I am I am completely monitored by my teacher, like my parent, right? Parents are monitoring kids. Similarly, here in the school education, in the uh, institution education, students have got to be monitored by the teacher as if they are the parents. So this is, 
Then the question is, is this a new practice? That's my question. No, I said, not at all. Why? Why? Because the system has already quoted Dronacharya, right? Pandavas and Kauravas got educated. And what Drona followed up was this credit-based education only, right? Gurukula system was there. Indian setup was known for this, in fact. When British started ruling us, they wanted to intentionally kill our education system. They did it and uh, successfully, and uh, unfortunately, we lost it. So look at Gurukula system was there, and then you know, it is being practiced in Western universities nowadays for the long, long years, right? And then, and especially in India, it is being well adopted in IITs, IITs, IAC, and reputed institution, you know, IA, um, uh, triple IITs, right? Any yeah, yeah, law institutions, you know, law institutions of uh, great repute. So they are law adopted. Look, uh, suppose if my son is in 10 plus 2 education, oh, my son plan or our parent plan is always to push them into IITs. Why? For B take, for B. We always love to you know, encourage our kids to join IITs. Why not? Why not University of Missouri? Why not Bangalore University? Why not some other university? Why we are trying to see that our, our kid would join IITs? And IITs, not only the infrastructure, but the procedure being adopted for educating. Their continuous learning is there. And some experience is there. Right? No? The choices are many. Right? This, this is what? Why not in my college? That's my fundamental question, right? So look at, so this is not a new system. This is not a new paradigm of uh, learning. It is the one which is being adopted well in national, uh, you know, institutions of national repute uh, and Western universities. And it is, it was there uh, earlier to our conventional education system, like Gurukula. Gurukula, Gurukula means the student used to go to the Kula of Guru. I mean, the residence of Guru and learn. That was the institution, right? And then later on, due to some reason, Shisha Kula came into picture. And Guru used to go to the Shisha's residence to teach, where the parents of the Shisha used to dominate. Right? Where here Guru is dominating, their parents were dominating. And both were unhappy in both the systems. Because in this system, parents are unhappy. In this system, Guru is unhappy. Then what the government or uh, you know, public thought that, why not? We meet in between. Let Guru come on the way, you know, off, off way through and Shisha come off way through, meet at some institution. That's like universities, colleges and so on, right? So here Guru used to go, whereas here Shisha used to go, uh, not completely now, off way through, meet at in midpoint, call it as institutions, education institutions, right? And today online education says that, no, 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 not even institution is required. You need not come here. You need not come here. You stay at your residence. You stay at your residence. You deliver lecture so that he will attend. He being here itself, you interact with him. He will attend to your questions being addressed. That's online education. E-learning. E-learning has become now an interesting paradigm of learning. But anyway, whether you follow Gurukula or you follow institution way of learning or e-learning, what to be offered, what to be opted by students, and how to be you know, evaluated, how to make it an open system. That's what is this CBCS pattern of education, which is, uh, has become an indispensable component of a national education policy today. Well, this is the time to understand then what is this credit all about, sir. So I've given you, hope, I understand, you know, I delivered uh, content in an understanding and mandate to appreciate what is this CBCS all about, a philosophy of CBCS all about. So credit, credit is something. Because you're all professionals, you know, you're all in teaching uh, uh, in one or the other colleges. By the end of a month, you'll get some credits into your bank account. Your salary, you have got a salary account. A professor has got some credits. Associates, associate professor has some other credit, right? Not necessarily same. Not necessarily same. But both of them have worked for the month, one month. So on the other end, the office superintendent has got a different balance as a credit. Office uh, attender has got a different credit. Everybody is an employee. And by the end of a month, you know, so everybody gets a salary into their salary account. That's what is called credited. Credited. One lakh is credited. Or Fifty thousand is credited. Uh, why is this one lakh credited? Because there was something which was well defined for a professor. Pro being a professor, you have got to do all these. 
So being an associate professor, you have got to do all this. Being a clerk of an institution, you have got to do all this, right? And this much helps you to get fifty thousand credit. This much helps you to get one lakh credit. This much helps you to get a two uh, two lakh credit, and so on. Look at. I mean, based on the amount of effort, based on the ability, based on your qualification. I mean, all in all, performance, right? How much effort you put in for a period of one month? and what is expected to be put in by the end of a month that decides how much should be credited similarly here the credit is something that the student is expected to put in the effort to undergo through a course in order to undergo through a course a student is expected to put in some amount of effort and that effort is quantified in the form of credit a student enrolls for a course suppose enrolls for enrolls for a course let's say indian economy indian economic is one course in order to attend through the classes in order to attend through the practical classes in order to attend through my tutorials right all in all to become eligible to appear for the examination on that course student has to put in some considerable expected effort how much effort is supposed to put in and based on the effort that is expected to be put in by the student to undergo through a course of my interest i work out this is what is called a credit if if there are two different courses where the students are expected to put in two different quantity of efforts i mean to undergo through this course he has to put in additional effort whereas for this he need not have to put in additional effort then obviously credit for this course is less than the credit for this course so hope you understood credit is something that is what is expected by a student or effort to be put in in order to undergo through a course then course is made up of as i said you know any course is made up of a theory component a tutorial component and a practical component i said you know so theory component look at i just have enrolled for my course called you know uh, indian academy then i just attend two hours of lecture throughout the semester every week i am attending through Two hours of lecture. That's the only effort I have got to put in. Then I say that it carries two credits, right? That course called Indian Economy as uh, it will be delivered only two hours a week, only theory two hours a week. Then student has to attend through all two hours a week for about sixteen weeks a semester. Then I say that if somebody suc becomes successful in that course, appearing for examination, clearing the, he becomes successful, successful. then i say that he got two credits because of that course suppose there is another course indian history indian history involves the following two hours theory a week in addition to two hours theory in a week student as student is expected to attend my tutorial class about two hours a week two hours. tutorial class means not not that broadcasting it is to one to one interaction or one to many interaction but in a in a close batch wise you know i just teach instead of all 40 students i teach only 20 students then 20 will be interacting with me i just give them some particular assignments and get them evaluated and get them performed in the classroom i teach them you know i just help them as if i am also a student mingle with them i sit with them like tutorial like contact for two hours the tutorial is not like as rigid as theory then then two hours is counted to be one credit then if somebody attends through two hours tutorial a week for about 16 weeks semester then it amounts one credit because in addition to that he also attend through two theory hours a week you know then that that brings in two credits it is an additional effort put in by the student then it is added a credit then now indian history course has three credits so there could be a course on physics you know there could be a course on on, on newton theory newton theory will be taught one hour a week and student has to practice for every one hour what knowledge he learns you know in the form of problem solving with the support of a teacher about 2 hours a tutorial and he has to practice for about 4 hours in laboratory look at in a semi, in a, in a way in a way to 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 gain the credit from the course called theory of newtons one has to attend one hour theory class 2 hour tutorial and four hour practical then generally two hours of practical is equal to one hour one, one hour of theory then because of four hour it is counted to be two credits and because of two 
hours of tutorial, it's counted to be one credit. Then two plus one, three plus one hour theory is one. So totally four. So attend through this course and appear for the examination. The moment student becomes successful in that particular course, then I say that he got four credits. I mean, look at generally one hour of lecture hour, lecture hour, lecture hour, I mean. One hour theory is considered to be equal to one credit. Per week, I'm talking about attending through 16 weeks. One hour of theory is equated to one credit. Two hours of tutorial, a session of two hours of tutorial is equated to generally one credit. So session of two hours of practical is also equated to one hour. If there is a course which involves only practical, let's say only practical, but students will attend the practical sessions uh, totally six hours a week. Then I say that once he becomes successful in that course, then he will get six hours means three credits. Suppose there is a there is a paper or there is a course which had about you know uh, two hours theory, four hours tutorial, and four hours practical in a week. Then four hours practical use two, uh, four hours the tutorial use two, two plus two is four, and two hours of theory is two. Then totally that 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 paper will have six credits. I mean the credit for a course is all depend, you know, is all decided based on how much effort is expected by a student to be put in, in terms of attending through the lecture, in terms of attending through the tutorial, in terms of hours of attending through the a practical. So here is, is a slide representing you what I explained. You know, one hour per week, throw out a semester amounts to one credit, minimum of two hours a week, uh, throw out a semester amounts to one credit for tutorial and minimum of two hours even in case of a practical. So a course has got these three components, L, T, P, lecture, tutorial and a practical. So suppose here is an example. Lecture is two hours per week, tutorial is two hours per week, practical is two hours. So one plus one plus one, right? So two hours gives you two credits, tutorial two hours makes one credit, practical two hours makes one credit, total number of credit for that course is four credit. So number of credit is nothing but L plus T plus P. So uh, in, a, in, a, in a semester, what are the different courses that student can take up? There could be some courses that Board of Studies can think of uh, related to ability enhancement for courses. I mean, physics, the student's ability has got to be enhanced and mandatory course. Somebody who wants to be graduated with a physics degree should have some fundamental courses related to physics. Those are compulsory. There is no choice for them, right? Somebody wants to become masters in mathematics. So must have some foundational knowledge in mathematics. And rest of the courses could be elective on mathematics because nobody is expected to be get familiar with all branches of mathematics, right? But to be a master's in mathematics, there are certain courses which are common knowledge, you know, mandatory knowledge. Those are per, you know, made compulsory courses. And those are called discipline-specific core courses. So identify certain courses called discipline-specific courses. Identify certain courses as ability enhancement core courses. Identify certain courses as somebody should have some environmental knowledge, you know, uh, core courses, that's a mandatory. Constitution of you know, India, mandatory. Some required knowledge for every individual of Indian citizen, right? So skill enhancement course courses, these are all related to your core, related to your core. So discipline specific electives related to physics. Long wage core courses, generic elective, open elective, right? Open elective, suppose you are, you, are, you are taking up physics, MSc or physics, BSc, but because of technology driven, you know, today online education, everything is online and mobile systems are coming up like, you know, anything like small devices. So learning physics alone will not suit the current requirement. You have to learn something about a digital media today. So take up some courses offered by computer science department, right? So those are open elective. Suppose somebody has been practicing Bharatanatyam, just because he or she joined, you know, BSc in Eurogis College, BSc of University of Mysore, uh, he, he need not or she need not give away her, her, her ability or interest in practicing Bharatanatyam. So she can go to fine arts department, you know, enroll for Bharatanatyam of two credits so that she will practice two hours a week at Bharatanatyam, right? As a part of, she can encase, right? That also has a credit of uh, education. That's what is open elective. 
so you may think of some project work thermal value added courses right it's not it's very important today certification courses to keep to improve the job you know employability of the student so you can distribute uh, courses of diff this different nature and every course has got its own title and has got its own ltp pattern right and if there are uh, two students who have enrolled for the same course and both of them become successful in that course both of them will get the same credit so there is a theory of newtons four credit course x enrolls y also enrolls so x passes that y also passes that and both will get the four credit but at what what ability he could pass it at what ability he could pass it what was his performance what was his performance then i say that in that particular course called theory of newton x got distinction with a grade 8 whereas y got first class with a grade 6 then i say that he got the four credit with grade 8 he got the four credit the same credit four with a grade 6 then it is 4 into 8 it is 4 into 6 so 4 into 8 32 and 4 into 6 24 so x has got 32 grade points and y has got 24 as a grade point credits are same grades are different hence grade points are different that's how you can distinguish a student from another student based on their performance right so so in order to get their degree you know a one year degree they had to study various courses of different you know uh, pattern of ability enhancement discipline or environmental like that you know so if they want to um, take some certificate then they must they must acquire you know as and when they complete a course you know uh, they acquire so many credits uh, like my account gets you know credited into balance the balance will be go on increasing you know today balance is of 1 lakh next month salary balance becomes 3 lakhs next month sell the balance become pile was on accumulating you know? whenever a student accumulates roughly about 40 credits from various courses of certain level then i say that he becomes eligible for certificate courses if so students accumulates 80 credits all in all then i say that he becomes eligible for diploma uh, you know a program uh, he can get a diploma degree so then he only accumulates about 120 or 130 credits then he becomes eligible for three years graduation if somebody accumulates 160 then i say that he is eligible for honors degree if somebody accumulates 200 into 40 credits in case studied by a candidate then the candidate will get a master degree also like this is how we have to fix up i mean minimum for pg what we have set up uh, nowadays is 76 and 136 credits for ug and maximum you know for pg is 90 uh, 148 in case of ug right so uh, as per university guideline double generation you know ug can be of uh, uh, three semesters or three years to six years pg could be two years to uh, what is called uh, for yes so minimum requirement on each type of courses could be fixed up how many compulsory courses or how many credits from elective courses how many credits from open elective courses so that that guideline of a specific institution will fix up that's in general right so evaluation as i said teacher who offers a course is supposed to be wholly responsible i don't believing in somebody coming in and evaluating my students I, especially myself personally i don't believe in somebody coming from darwad university and evaluating my student sitting here for one hour and looking at all their performance and deciding is first class is second class i have been here teaching them and monitoring them observing them in spite of it i really find it difficult to distinguish two candidates right how can i expect somebody all the way coming from darwad and being here for only one hour and finally deciding that he is bad he is good right i don't believe it i i love to be a uh, you know a responsible person to evaluate my own student that is the freedom of a teacher teacher who offers a course is wholly responsible in evaluation of a student and marking what not but must be accountable that's very important what i have how do i evaluate students you know i have to declare well in advance i mean before i start my semester course i just chat it out this is how i evaluate for the first 20 marks for the next 20 marks for the next 20 marks for the final 40 marks these are evaluate Com continuous assessment will be done like this one test 
with with this weightage assignment with this weightage you know viva was with this weightage seminar with this weightage i declare all well in the beginning in the semester itself before students enroll for my course they are aware of how do i evaluate students for the next semester so teacher is responsible for everything and that doesn't mean that you can enjoy your freedom of changing a day to day you have to fix up in the beginning of the semester and you have to let the student know about the morality of evaluation well in advance and obviously it's based on continuous assessment the structure of evaluation may vary from a teacher to teacher but it should be known to the students well in advance that's very important so generally 50 50 we we encourage uh, you know semester end examination 50% and there could be two discrete way of announcing continuous assessment Whereas the weightage could be twenty five and twenty five put together. So for first component, fifty percent of the syllabus must have been completed. In the middle of the semester, we evaluate students for twenty five marks, and end of the semester, just before the last day of semester, we evaluate the student for another twenty five marks. But the fifty percent of the syllabus should be completed here. Another remaining fifty should be completed here, and by the end of the semester, student must have been evaluated for six fifty percent, and semester end examination could be fifty percent. you can set it up but uh, nowadays it is 30 and 70 uh, that's really hopeless as far as continuous assessment is concerned at least uh, the ca should be given equal weightage to that of semester end examination but in my department we are given 60% weightage for the continuous but instead of evaluating twice we do it thrice you know we report 20 20 20 and then 40 as a semester end examination so Assignments could in, you know, involve creative assignments, designing assignments, problem solving assignments. You know, table, desk work, teamwork, seminar, what not? You can just plan, plan. Is you, you are the ultimate, you know, uh, uh, decide, you know, decision maker. You are the ultimate judge. You decide which is the best way of evaluating your students on the topic of your delivery. right that can be varied the teacher can be same but the student can also be same but the topics are different courses are different you can change your modality of evaluation right okay so grading as i said every course has a credit value and when a student successfully clears it up you will get a grade and grade and that credit value will be multiplied i said you know four credits but grade eight then four into eight thirty two four credits the student y got 6 4 into 6 24 that's what is called gp so for every course a student has a gp he is enrolled for 10 courses there are 10 gps in in a semester he has enrolled for let's say six courses in each in each course there is a credit value credit value for each because he has credited successfully courses he has got grade point uh, he has got grade and multiply them respectively you have a grade point how many grade point Six courses, six grade point. GP one, GP two, GP six. Add them up, right? Add them up and take the average divided by the total number of credits of that semester. That is what is called SGPA, semester grade point average. That is the sum of all grade points that he got in a semester divided by the total number of credits that he has enrolled for. If you do it for the entire program of two years masters or entire program of three years bachelors or entire program of four years bachelor of engineering. And I call it as a cumulative grade point average. This cumulative grade point average decides whether he is a distinction student, or is a first class student, or is a second class student. By the end of a uh, you know program for certification in convocation, right? That is what is called CGP. So then, because here everything is open and the teacher has great freedom, on the other end, the student also has great freedom. So every institution has to set up a grievance cell. which which allows the student or permits the student for going with an appeal right or not only the student but also a teacher also right so grievance cell can be at a course level grievance cell could be at a program level grievance cell could be at a different level grievance cell could be at a college level grievance cell could be at university level so we have different levels of establishing of grievance cell, you know cells so without this uh we generally uh, the cbcs regulation doesn't get accepted right? approved so with this dear friends uh, change is a permanent thing perhaps even in the next lecture when i talk about current technology mm, driving us today uh, i canvas on change only change is the one which is permanent not me not you not any setup today 
what is really permanent in the nature is the change. Raining, nobody expected, continuously rains. There is a change. We have got to get along with the change. There is no way. Unless we get along with the change, we cannot excel in our life. Some more we got to, that ability is there in everybody. We have got to get along with that. Change without improvement. Improvement without change. Both have no meaning. I got to change myself only when there is an improvement. Or if I change myself, there should be some improvement. So change is the permanent. But we have got to accept, we have got to go. But when we go along, we must improve ourselves. That's what my uh, final message of this uh, lecture. So change without improvements or improvements without change. Both have no meaning. Thank you all. Thank you very much. If any, I would love to address your questions. Yes,